Hi to my voice family, it's good to be here. Today I'd like us to answer a question. Are we really living in the last days? Are we? Well, the first answer is yes. But this is mostly because we look at the perversion and depravity and how this world can't really be saved from the environment to the minds of men and women. America can only get worse and with what they're spilling over into our country and the rest of the world, we can all assume it's all coming to a close. But what if I told you that everything that is happening is only the beginning of what the Bible calls the beginning of sorrows? Let's read from Matthew chapter 24, verse 2 to 8. I will skip and start from verse 4. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these at the beginning of sorrows. Living in this day, world over, has revealed that really we might only be in the very first line of the end, which is, take heed that no one deceives you. But what does it mean to be deceived? What is deception exactly? I'd like to share with you or submit to you about 13 different variants or 14 different variants of deception. Number one, deception is wolves in sheep's clothing. We've heard this tossed around all our lives and sometimes we can water down the meaning of, what, of, of this statement. A wolf is a cunning and ferocious creature while a sheep is innocent. The Bible clearly states that false prophets come with this kind of demeanor. They come with an innocent appearance, but inside they are wolves. Jesus says you will know them by their fruits. This means you have to learn to check people's lives. You have to check their behavior off of the pulpit. Hear the way they speak when they are not preaching. You will know a wolf is hiding in sheep's clothes by his fruits. Number two, deception is sheep in wolves clothing. I know you've never heard that one before. But in today's thinking of man, many Christians believe or think that they can reel in non-believers or attract non-believers by almost behaving like them. I'm also a culprit, I think I've done this before. People want to come up with creative methods of bringing people to Christ. The action may seem good because they might end up being born again, but the intentions are misplaced. There should be no manipulation in leading people to a conference, seminar, or even to being born again. Jesus told his servants, call in the invited guests. If they give an excuse, call those in the streets. If you choose to call people in by exciting something in their flesh, they will soon find out that true Christianity is about killing the flesh. And now you have disappointed believers or they just leave and you've lost out. Number three, deception is misinformation and misrepresentation. In the last days, information will be the biggest weapon used against mankind. When it comes to information, things being said can even be 99.99% true. But that 0.01% of, of, of lies has the potential to destroy everything. The Bible talks about a woman who was trying to hide living. Living is yeast. She was trying to hide it and she put it in three measures of flour. But when she came back, she found that the yeast had leavened the flour. So it's kind of like an inevitability. If there's a very slight um, addition of lies to some seemingly big truth, 
eventually that lie will cover the will destroy the entire truth for example once saved always saved it sounds nice when you're telling people who are being born again that once they are saved they can't necessarily lose their salvation by sinning when they accidentally sin but that is not a biblical statement and left on its own it starts to morph and people start to think that because there's grace I can live my own way and still be called a Christian but that isn't what God wants that isn't what God says there's so many scriptures that we can dig into that show that people who didn't endure to the end were actually cast out into the the outer darkness where there was weeping and gnashing of teeth misrepresentation nowadays looks like this someone with a large following must be true people doing miracles and great works must be good that is not the truth yes we can attest good works to God but we should not be naive to believe that everybody who is doing something good has good intentions for us we should not be naive to believe that they don't have selfish intentions just because somebody has been in the Christian industry Christian industry for a long time doesn't make them an inspiration we need to in these last days we can put away with things like being a fan I don't think that fan base is for the Christian sector because we are brothers and sisters who must keep on checking each other um, even if Paul was preaching he commended some church the Berylians because he said when even if he preached we trust Paul with our eyes closed but those guys would still check the scriptures after Paul preached but to us in the last days we think oh Paul has a great following Paul has written more than five books in the Bible he must be true we don't need to check him and that's a problem we need to start to put titles away because once we make celebrities out of Christians we fail to speak against their behavior when they do things that are not biblical when they say things that are not biblical number five deception is amplification of one side of the story I always say that those that speak lies are usually loud and quick but the truth simmers like a broth and no one can deny its goodness when it's done let's take for example the transgender movement when you hear people or transgender people on social media talking about their experience the first thing they tell you about is how they are happy that they have found themselves they are happy that they are now feeling like who they are inside they've brought out who they are inside to the outside because they've cut off their genitals and you know done these hormonal treatments that give them you know female features or the other way around they talk about how happy they are but there's something that they don't tell you they don't tell you the monstrosity of the entire process of what they go through they don't tell you that actually even if you change your body to become a woman you're not really a woman because you go amongst the women and you won't be able to connect with them on a female level because you're not female they won't tell you the gruesome processes they had to go through they don't tell you of course some could come out now but they would, but those who are coming out now would tell you that they were blinded when they were entering because nobody told them the bad side when these guys amplify the good side of being transgender they mislead the younger generation into thinking that it's okay to do what they've done when in fact they're suffering inside number six deception is disproportionate truths preach the kingdom of God if you preach only holiness people will become good at hiding their sins people will also equate being blessed to being right with God if you emphasize prosperity people will equate being rich to being right with God and they will do anything to get money and look rich the balance is Jesus non-believers many non-believers are actually doing well for themselves and so if you preach that if they get born again god will bless them and god will open doors for them they won't understand because doors are already opened for them they don't need a, a, a god who can pay their bills or pay for their children's school fees they already have that so once you start to preach that kind of gospel of prosperity or God will bless you all the time God will bless you and God will bless your marriage you need marriage 
once you start going in one direction even if those things are good once you start to preach them disproportionately you lose out on people who actually want to get saved to preach the kingdom of god is to declare the life of the kingdom to declare that hell is real and that jesus is soon coming and that kind of gospel everybody needs it number seven deception is things that look good but are not okay you will need discernment in the past like three years in the past people would ask me why i don't like to listen to maverick city or why i don't listen to mike todd hopefully they've repented but I, I i couldn't every time i want every time i tried to i just always felt like it sounds like a good message because mike todd came with the message on dating and poor you know on it because he was relating with a lot of, of our issues about dating but i just couldn't bring myself to listen to him and i'm not sharing this because i'm not a boss but i want to show you that it's possible to discern a thing before you get to know it it's possible to discern where the where this person is coming from they may seem good but it's but behind the scenes it's not okay and if you're with that person until a scandal happens you might ha you might have already experienced some sort of damage imagine dating somebody and getting into a relationship and then before you discern whether, the, whether they're right for you or not and you, you get entangled with them and you end up you know doing wrong things and sinning and everything and then you realize that this person is not for you because you're not growing spiritually the damage has already been done even if the person walks away even if you walk away there's so much you have to rebuild all because you could not discern that just because something looked good it wasn't okay the bible declares that no light can be hidden for in time it will be revealed exposing whether it is a light that is from darkness or a light that is from light you must be able to discern and do something about it number eight deception is an underlying agenda you need to start asking questions questions like for example what is feminism for where did it come from you will soon find out that there is someone that stands to gain greatly that there is someone behind the scenes pushing an agenda that is being perfected and a great mass of people that will be harmed so greatly for example did you know that transgenderism is a direct result of feminism how it's up to you to follow the rabbit hole for yourself discover beyond what it, what is being told to you by those that actually hate you number nine deception is making people focus on minor things while major issues are passing in the background majoring on the minor issues leaves fewer people to fight for the truth have you ever thought about why in the u.s every game nfl nba soccer football every game or entertainment or concerts has a full stadium no matter what it is take it to the u.s you have a full stadium but when it's time to fight for real issues legislature that can actually change people's lives forever there's only one person three people one person in the street with a megaphone have you ever wondered why it's like that well if you haven't it's because they are majoring on the minor issues and when the when the minor issues are, are blown up into a big deal people are distracted and whilst people are distracted they will they'll push things under push things in push things in and by the time people are recognizing there's already so much damage that has been made for example now you start seeing children who are watching drag shows in the streets things are being pushed while people are so busy with which game what is happening and i'm not saying watching the game is bad i'm just saying that when it's time to allocate importance and priority focus on the major issues because those are the ones that pertain to eternal life number 10 deception is doing good by an evil spirit if you neglect the criteria that the bible uses to measure good and evil you will easily fall for this you will need the discernment of the holy spirit which comes from intimacy with him 
This means you need to graduate from praying shopping list prayers to actually wanting him, his ways, and his will to play out in your life. Don't be fooled. People are able to go to great extents for an image they want to portray. Whether it's to be seen as a powerful man of God or to be the most picked prostitute on the street. Number 11. Deception is mixing the truth and lies. One mouth speaking both truth and lies. John the Baptist called them a brood of vipers. And who is the viper of vipers? The serpent himself, the father of all liars, the devil. But allow me to qualify this. Every preacher is still a man. And so sometimes he might say something that is not true. He might error, he might just make a mistake. But when it comes to such a preacher, notice how he responds to correction. Notice how they respond to biblical evidence against what they have said. The way they respond will be the answer to whether you should stay or run. When a person doesn't check themselves for their mistakes, if they lie constantly and even begin to plan about their lie, they are eventually overtaken by a lying spirit and now they shall be the smooth talkers that you never want to encounter. Number 12. Deception is a different standard of truth than he who is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh to the Father except by me. People nowadays believe there is something called my truth or your truth, and as long as it please, it's pleasing to you, you should do it. But did you know that people who live after their flesh doing as they please are living by the devil's momentum it was the satisfaction of self that got us here in the first place it sounded good to eve to be uh, to be the same as god to receive the knowledge of good and evil to judge for herself what is good and what is evil but the devil soon jumped on it and began to warp our perception so now we are here calling things that are evil good and calling things that are good evil to show you how light how lightly we take this what do you call a person who is amazing at their job we say it's bad news and you're like why do we call him bad news we don't just call him good news but then no calling him good news doesn't sound like you're appreciating how good he is at his job so you call him oh he's bad news that's how warped it is People will say alcohol is good because, it, because they, for their leisure time, but they are, in the morning they are hungover with a headache, their liver is getting destroyed, they call it good, but it's evil. So once our perception was warped by the devil, he could bring in anything and we are calling evil good. Now that is deception. Another standard of truth is people who believe that they hear from the Holy Spirit unto sin. I'll play a short video. What you believe, how you believe, how you've done it. What? Because I would normally like it wouldn't. I would never even consider that. But he said, "Your your language is bait for the people I want you to reach." And if there's people that are saying, "Stop, you're cussing," hell, hell, hell. damn, yeah, not, yeah, B, not F, not. MF, not a hole. Not. And I'm comfortable with those words. Mm -hmm. I don't have a reason to say them right now. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um. What I like to say is that if you believe you have heard from the Holy Spirit, run it by Jesus, who is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit can never lead you to do something that is antagonistic to the Word of God. There is no person who the Holy Spirit can tell to divorce his wife there is no person who the holy spirit can tell to use cussing words just as you had seen but people one think they can get away with anything just because they ta add a tag of i heard from the holy spirit the holy spirit is, is one spirit and the best part about the holy spirit is, is one spirit in the demonic realm, there's so many spirits. So a lying spirit isn't the same as a fornicating spirit, isn't the same as a gluttony spirit. But to us, for us, the Holy Spirit is one. 
He can't say one thing to me and then come and blaspheme the thing he has said to me, to you. So meaning he can't, he can't tell me, oh, your, wife, your husband is Mike. And then he goes to Mike and say, oh, your wife is Toela. I'm sorry, Toela. He's not your husband. He's mine. So, it, no, it doesn't work like that. The Holy Spirit cannot blaspheme himself. Besides that, the Holy Spirit's job is to glorify Christ. So everything that he does is in line with the words of Christ. And the words of Christ came from God. Therefore, the Trinity accepts. Number 14. Deception is changing the definition of words. This is the last but not the least. We use words to communicate and people who can come up with anything to define simple words distort communication completely. Um, there's a, an issue that arose where the Pope um, gave the Catholic Church the power to bless homosexual couples. It caused a lot of uproar amongst the Catholics and then a local priest gave a statement and he said um, something in the lines of you don't understand actually the definition of bless blessing blessing the homosexuals the definition of bless has been expanded to um to exp has been expanded and also does not exactly mean the catholic church endorses homosexual marriages it's just in the expansion of the the word it accommodates that those who are homosexuals can, are free to express themselves in their marriage covenant by the catholic church it's you have to like squint and like what huh what and the, and when they say these things they use so many terminologies that can sound like they're intelligent and they're you know they're working but it's not it's clearly deception paul says he uses the simplicity of the word of god against the eloquence of speech so people want to deceive you always want to sound flamboyant and to so see i'm using flamboyant i don't even use flamboyant but they want to make that their language sound so big like you can't understand it you can't understand the bible on your own so i should lead you to help you you can't understand this thing on your own i have to help you like why should you help me like blessing is bless we know what blessing means uh, you know that if somebody blesses you it means i don't go into that that is deception deception is the first round to the end and it can continue to push on you deception ranges from you believing that you can't be saved because you've seen so much and you're so far from god up to the once saved always saved meaning that you can do absolutely anything and god won't be mad at you or god or, or your salvation is still intact in between there's a miracle money in between there's all kinds of gymnastics and theatrics in the church in between there's laws that are being made by different sects in between there's um, all sorts of um, radical ideas but all this is a spectrum of deception and we need to stand on guard because the very first attempt or the very first um the very first attempt of the enemy on us will be to deceive us whether it's in making people look bad or exposing people or whatever it is there is a movement that is trying to attack your mind trying to make you believe things that are not true and you must stand on guard thank you